today we will talk about a function so here is the main function as we talked before in the previous class so when we talk about a function it has a name beside that we have like this um, plain brackets the circle brackets then we have the curly brackets and inside whatever we have we call it the body of the function so when we want to make our own function it will look exactly like the main function so it will have a name suppose we want to make a function called hi it will have these brackets then it will have the curly brackets so in the main function we wrote printf hello so in our own function it's, it's called hi so we print hi 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 okay so from the way main function when i want to call that function i call it like I call a person so hi come and do do the do the work for me so here from the main function i'm calling it so when i call it i just call the fun put the function the brackets and a semicolon and if it has other parts we will put those other parts here so for now it's just a plain simple function and then maybe we can put a by after it oh what did i do maybe so what happens when I run the program, C always starts with the main program, whatever is there. So if, it, if there are thousands of functions, it will always come to the main function. It will start, it will print hello, then it will say, it will see it's calling a function. So it will say, oh, it's calling hi. So it will jump into hi, print those hi, 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 and then come back and print by. This is how it, it should work. So let's take a look and see what's happening. So yes, uh, it said hello, hi, 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 and bye because we did not put a backslash on it. looks so ugly. Okay, so that's like a simple plain function because this function is not doing anything. It's actually printing and finishing up. We call these type of functions void function. It does not return me anything. It just returns me void. It does not return me anything. Void means nothing. But now, so this is a revision of the previous class text, but we wanted to come talk about a function that has, that has to do more. So uh, what we want to do is, I want a function that will add up numbers for me. So now the function's name is different. It's called add numbers. And I want it to add, I can add it in a main function, but now since I became very fancy and I have my own personal function, I want that function to do all the work for me. So I'll just call add number and it will go and do that work for me. So suppose I have big numbers like 100, another big number like 200. Two hundred, and I cannot add them up here in the main function, as you, as I told you. I want I, I want add number to add those numbers. So if I want to send this number to add number function, so I need to. I mean, if I if I send you something, I need a pot in which I will send it because you have to receive those numbers in a pot. So if I'm sending you an integer number, you need an integer pot. For example, if you need money, you have to you need a money bag to hold it. So same way, if you have these two integer numbers x and y, in the function we need actually two different uh, parts, two different variables that will hold x and y. So I have one variable called a and one variable called b. Uh, here we said int x comma y, but when we are making the function, we have to tell everything separately. I, I have to define what A is, what B is separately. So now, uh, when I'm calling this add number, so I want add number to add X and Y. And in this function, X is going to A, Y is going to B. So whatever I send actually is received in that order. So uh, X I sent x, um, I said 100 in x and it's going to a, I sent 200 in y and it's going to b, 
Okay, so it's like I'm sending you something over the um, parcel. Okay, so now in this add number, maybe I have another variable r, and r in r I'm adding this number a plus b. And what is happening is a becomes in a I have 100 and in b I have 200. So I add them up and I put it in r. And now, once I add them up, I want to return it back to main function because main function wanted the result. So I say return r. So when I'm returning r, this r is integer type. So I have to tell what is its type before the function. So that's what we want to tell, that if this is returning an integer type. So, okay, uh, you also need a pot because I'm sending you an integer. You have to put it somewhere. Okay, so now what we are doing, we need to. So let's see what is happening now, step by step. Okay, so I'm starting the program. I jump into the main function. So in the main function, I have two variables, x, y, and, res and result, uh, three variables. And in x and y, I added value. And now I make a call to this function. Add number, add 100 and 200. I'm sending them in x and y. And what happens, we call it call by value. So this x will go, it's not x, it's actually the copy. I, I mean, I copy this number into a, I copy this number into b, and it's coming. So now in this function, uh, we have, um, a holds 100, B holds 200, and I add them up, and I return it back to the main function. So when when I'm calling it, the return value, like 100 plus 200, 300 will come into the result, and it's printing the result. So let's take a look. We, we had this add numbers function. So I'm starting from main. I have these numbers. I call them, I call this function. It adds it up and puts it in a result. And I want to add it. Uh, let me, it looks ugly without backslash in. So when I want to see, yes, it's adding the number and printing it. So if I send, a, um, if I ask it to add 500 plus 200, so it's sending that as a parameter, adding it into the number and printing it. So it will be a different number now. So it's just we could do it in main function, but I mean we are doing it here using a function. One thing, uh, one two things I want to tell before um, I close this video. One thing is uh, these variables have a lifetime. So a variable I declare in the main function, this x y result, it has a lifetime only within this where I define it. So within this square bracket, uh, curly brackets, right? So x, y, and result, they have a lifetime within this main function. So if I talk about x, y, z, anything here, they will not know what, what I'm talking about. Again, this a, b, and r, they have a lifetime which is inside this variable. If I declare it outside this, we call it a global variable, it has a lifetime over the entire program. But using global variable is not a good practice. It makes the program complicated. So we will try to avoid that. But yeah, at least once make a global variable and try to use it. So what happens when I call this function, I'm sending x, y. If I have a name x, y here, I can have that same name, but this x will be different from this x. Okay, it's the same name like, um, like Korim, this is a Korim, another person that's, his name is also Korim. Or this is Lisa and there's another girl named Lisa. And I'm, even if I keep a name X and Y here, this X is the, it has a lifetime over here and this X has a lifetime over here. So they are not known to each other. It's not the same X or Y. Okay, uh, that's another thing. And when it's a function, the good part is actually, I can call it multiple times, okay? And I can call it in many ways. For example, first I called result add numbers, and then I'm saying result equals to add numbers. Suppose I give a number here, 
1000 and y and then I print it and then I say result equals to 1000 and 1 okay so I I can send parameters I can send number as parameters I can send variables and parameters but whatever I send I have to have enough space in the function itself because if I if I'm sending two numbers I need two parameters ready here two variables just ready here to capture those numbers others why otherwise I cannot do it right okay so like we said as we expected I called the function three times and three times it added it up and yes okay it did work thank you bye bye I will stop it.